Um, in the lab, we talk about Levy Jennings, which is essentially a Sheward um, individual chart, uh, which was sort of adopted for clinical laboratory studies. How do you actually construct this chart? You would have a line in the middle, a mean. This is your expected value of your control. You will then plot your individual um, results, like your control results. As you run your experiment, you will plot uh, different values across this mean. This would indicate how far the actual value is the mean. To show how far it is, you would also have lines going across which indicate your 1, 2, and your 3 standard deviation. And depending on the confidence limit that you use, you would either be controlling your process at 2 standard deviation or even at 3 standard deviation. In some labs, you'd have 2 standard deviation being your warning limit and 3 standard deviation being your action limit. While in others, you'd have a 1 standard deviation being your warning and your 2 standard deviation being an action limit, meaning anything outside 2 standard deviation is considered out of control. When you now have all these values, you've got every day you're plotting these QC results. You then need to do a trend analysis or interpret what information are you getting here. We normally would use WestGuard rules to try and do trend analysis. This is how we interpret uh, Levy Jennings uh, graphs. What are the WestGuard rules? Well, WestGuard rules are multi rule QC rules to help analyze whether or not an article run is in control or out of control. They use a set of statistical patterns, each being unlikely to occur by a random variability, thereby raising suspicion of faulty accuracy or precision in our measurement result. The procedure uses five different control rules to judge the acceptability of an analytical run. The advantage with this is that a multi-rule procedure that false rejections are kept to a low while at the same time maintaining a very high error detection system. So let's get into this waste guard rule. So just to give a very, very brief explanation of what these rules are. Let's say you read your QC sample. You get a number. What you're going to do, you're going to ask yourself, is this number outside my 2S control, your 2 standard deviation limit? If no, then it means it's within your control. It's within the two standard deviation limits, and then you can report the run. You accept those results. If yes, it is outside, so it's bigger than your two standard deviation, the second question you ask yourself is, is it outside the three S? So it's above the two and it's also above the three. If yes, it's above the three, then it has broken the three S rule. So it is out of control, then you reject. If no, it's not outside 3S, so that means it's lying between 2S and 3S, then you need to ask yourself the next question. You're then going to look at this relative to a previous result and see that is there another um, number that, like the previous number, was it at the same spot? So do we have two numbers that lie between 2S and 3S? If yes, then it's out of control. Then you're going to reject that run. But if no, if there's no number that's outside, so it's just this one that is now sitting between 2 and 3s, your next question is going to be, is this the previous number maybe lying in the minus 2s? If maybe this one was a plus 2s, is the previous number lying at the minus 2s? So my, between minus 2s and minus 3s. If that is yes, meaning the two numbers, the difference between those two numbers is actually four standard deviation because one is above the minus 2s, so it's li lying between minus 2 and minus 3, while the second one is between plus 2 and minus 3, meaning there's a four standard deviation upon. That is a rejection. You reject that. But if it's not, then we go to the next uh, rule. You then look at the four numbers now. So you look at this number relative to three other numbers that we with uh, uh, before it. You then look at, do all of them lie within a 1A? So are they all sitting in the same spot? If there's four numbers um, consecutively that we're sitting within the one, um, the same standard deviation limit, then that's also an issue. Then you're going to reject the line and say, nope, we now have a problem where we have four 1S rule violation. If they're not, so maybe you find that there's one sitting at this point, the other one is sitting at the mean, and they're sitting just ra randomly across the, 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 the limits. 
then you say okay i move on to the next one so your next point becomes now you look at 10 numbers so from this number that you're evaluating you look at nine other numbers relative to it and if there is 10 numbers sitting in the same side of the mean so meaning 10 consecutive numbers sitting in the same side of the mean then we now have a 10x violation and in that case we also have a, it's a bias situation and we reject that fine but if it's not we accept and we report so what these rules are you look at your result and then based on uh, how it appears relative to other points remember this is trend analysis you analyzing the trend you then would see that do you have a bias trend or not and these are the different rules that you can apply to to do that so now we know how to do a trend analysis so what you need to then do is then go and actually do a root cause analysis and find out okay where does my problem lie do i have a precision problem or an accuracy problem and where does it actually come from you know because there is no point in doing this trend analysis and then you don't do anything to fix it but to fix it you need to do a proper root cause analysis and then apply the the correct corrective action so in general there's almost like a basic understanding on what these rules could actually indicate you know so usually when you have a 1 3s or a 4s and r 4s rule it usually would indicate a random error whereas when you have a 2s a 4 1s or a 10x rule violation that is most likely to indicate a systematic error as i said this is a general indication a general consensus in which type of errors are you looking at so that when you now do a root a, a corrective action you can apply the correct one knowing exactly what you're dealing with so since we've touched a little bit on random and systematic errors we then now in our next video need to define what exactly are these what is a random error and what is a systematic error and that is for our next video see you in the next one thank you for watching